UN gong show continued today as Iranian despot Mahmoud Ahmadinejad took the podium. Can the flower of democracy blossom from NATO's missiles, bombs, or guns? Ladies and gentlemen, if some European countries still use the Holocaust after six decades as the excuse to pay fine or ransom to the Zionist, all right, it's the same old, same old naked anti-Semitism at the United Nations from Ahmadinejad. Dictators outnumber democracies in that ridiculous establishment. Ahmadinejad is a nut, but here are a few of his crazier statements. Anybody who recognizes Israel will burn in the fire of the Islamic nation's fury. The wave of the Islamic revolution will soon reach the entire world. They, the Western powers, launched the myth of the Holocaust. They lied, they put on a show, and they support the Jews. In Iran, we don't have homosexuals like in your country. I don't know who's told you that we have this. Folks, it's easy to laugh at them, just treat them like a buffoon. Problem is, this buffoon is pursuing nuclear weapons, and that's not buffoonery. He's killing his own people. June 20th. 2009, Neda, an Iranian woman killed in protests after the country's sham of an election. Her death, captured on video by bystanders, broadcast all over the net, and the video becoming a rallying point for the opposition. Described, and I'm quoting, the most widely witnessed death in human history, exposing the regime for what it was. The question, what has changed? Ahmed Betebi, former political prisoner, joining us from New York. We feel very privileged to have him, along with Ben Cohn of UNWatch.org. They're sponsoring the We Have a Dream Summit. Ahmad, if I can just start with uh, you. What happened to you in Iran? Hi, uh, my name is Ahmad Batebi. I was uh, a political prisoner in um, Iran. When I was a student, uh, mm, uh, Iran government for uh, students' um, activity arrested me and sent me jail. Uh, I was um, near the two years in solitary confinement and um, uh, in prison. Iran government um, tortured me, uh, and uh, I was uh, mm, in a prison near the ten years and then escaped. Uh, from prison to 2008, uh, and uh, I'm United States right now. I'm a victim, Iran a regime victim. Mr. Batebi, what would you like to say to the man responsible? What would you like to say tonight to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, the president of your country? Problem is it, uh, Ahmadinejad is uh, not uh, uh, Iranian pe uh, people uh, president, uh, you know. Um, Ahmadinejad message uh, is not Iranian uh, uh, people message, Iranian people voice. This is just uh, Iran government uh, policy and Iran government uh, voice. I want to say just silent, please silent because you are not Iran president. Um, Iranian people, um, the president is uh, Mehdi Karoubi or Mir Hussein Musavi that they are in the jail right now. So you, you, you want him to shut his mouth because what he's using his mouth for doesn't represent the wishes of your people. Yes, yes, because this is not uh, um, Iranian people message. This is, I told you, this is just Iran government message, not Iranian people message. Ben Cohn, I want to ask you a couple of questions about today and uh, the gong show that is the United Nations. Well, what is the point? Uh, he keeps being invited. Uh, Western nations like Canada, and I'm proud to say we were the first, uh, listen to him for a few moments. He goes off on his usual tirade, anti-Semitism, anti-Americanism, uh, Holocaust denial, what have you. And then Canada and other nations walk out. Well, what is the point of this repeated ritual? It's an insult to the person you're standing beside. It's an insult to those people who've been killed, like the young woman that we showed a few moments ago. It's an insult to all those people in Iranian jails right now being tortured. Why do we do this? I think the reason is that the United Nations wears several hats. 
There's the United Nations that brought us the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Uh, you were mentioning, Charles, that we have a Dream Summit in which we were proud to have Ahmed as one of our key participants coming together with, uh, with dissidents and, and human rights victims from all over the world, China, Cuba, Syria among them. And we reaffirmed at the summit that Universal Declaration of Human Rights. But the United Nations at the same time is also a body of member states. And therefore, whoever those member states choose as their leaders will get the podium at the United Nations General Assembly. Now, you rightly point out that this was the sixth year in a row that Mahmoud Ahmadinejad defiled the United Nations and defiled New York City with his presence by going to the podium. But equally, there were a lot of regimes that might have been there this year that were not. Most obviously, Colonel Gaddafi of Libya, who was there two years ago, but because he's now been overthrown, was not there this year. And so, whenever there is a regime change, you will get rid of people like, like Ahmadinejad. Until there is regime change, we will be forced year in, year out, to watch this really disgraceful, obscene ritual of this racist, anti-Semitic Holocaust denier, this murderer of his own people, this man who tortured my good friend Ahmed here for 10 years. We'll be forced to watch him get up to that podium and deliver the same inchoate, conspiracy theory-laden rant. Well, what I'd like to see, my dream, you talk about the We Have a Dream Summit, my dream is for Ahmed Batebi to get up at that esteemed body and to speak. And no human being and no representative of any democracy, including the one I'm very proud to say I'm with, Canada, none of these people would walk out. We would be standing and applauding. Ahmed Batebi, I applaud you for what you're doing. Please stay safe and travel safely, and God be with you. Thank you, and Ben Cohn, thank you for what you're doing as well. Thank you very Thank much, you Charles. So much.